Well, welcome and thank you for joining us as we uh, worship on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost. My name is Pastor Peter Gallieni, pastor of the Ringwood Knox Lutheran Parish. Uh, in our parish this Sunday, we um, are celebrating what we call our Baptism Sunday, where we focus um, on God's gift of baptism. We renew our baptism vows. And so in, our, um, in my sermon today, I want to look at that. And um, Paul also talks about that in our uh, epistle reading today, where he talks about one church, one faith, one baptism, um, and talks about the unity that the Spirit brings, which is really important at this time um, as our church continues uh, along a path where many are concerned about the future with the, uh, the way forward proposal and what might be the outcome of Synod. But um, we stay strong in um, knowing that uh, God is uh, the Lord of the church and um, that we have um, our unity uh, with him. Um, may God bless your worship and uh, we'll begin with the opening sentences. There is one body and one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to sing our opening hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. Friends in Christ, let us confess our sins to God our Father and ask him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. We confess to you, almighty God, before the whole company of heaven and to each other that we have sinned in thought, word and deed by our own fault. 
Have mercy on us for Jesus' sake. Forgive us all our sins and bring us to eternal life. Amen. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce the grace of God to all of you on behalf of my Lord Jesus Christ and by his command I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. According to your steadfast love, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And the Lord be with you. Let us pray for the bread of life. God, our source and our goal, you have made us to hunger and thirst for you. Satisfy our hunger with the bread that gives real life, your Son, Jesus Christ. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us hear our Bible readings. Our first reading is written in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 11, beginning at verse 26. When the wife of Uriah heard that her husband was dead, she made lamentation for him. When the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. And the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, There were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he bought. He brought it up and it grew up with him and with his children. He used to eat of his meagre fare and drink from his cup and lie down in his bosom and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveller to the rich man and he was loath to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the wayfarer who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared that for the guest who had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel and I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have added much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and have taken his wife to be your wife and you have killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house for you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, I will raise up trouble against you from within your house and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbour and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this very son. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan said to David, Now the Lord has put away your sin, you shall not die. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. A psalm, Psalm 51, a psalm which David wrote from this account. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me in a willing spirit. Our second reading is written in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When, he, when it says he ascended, what does it mean? But that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all in all things. The gift he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Son of Man will give you the food that endures for eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to St. John in chapter 6, beginning at verse 24. Glory to you, O Lord. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boat and went to Capernaum, looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, 
which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the matter in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hungry, be hungry, Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming from the Father to give life to the world. Help us to believe in you. Amen. We sing the church as one foundation.
Grace, mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you promise I'm with you always to the end of the age in our baptism. So be with us now as we hear your word. Bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts, so they may be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As we read the book of Acts, the book that follows the beginnings of the new church after Jesus' death, resurrection and ascension, it is interesting to note the people's response when they hear the preaching of the apostles. In the very first sermon preached on Pentecost Sunday by Peter, the people respond to the word, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptised, every one of you. When Philip met the Ethiopian eunuch on the road from Jerusalem to Gaza, he explained the scriptures to him that he was reading. After they had travelled along the road for a little while, they came to some water and the eunuch asked Philip, look, here is water. What can stand in the way of me being baptised? And immediately he was baptised. When the jailer was witnessed to by Paul and Silas in prison, he took them, washed their feet, their wounds, and immediately he and his whole household were baptised. Did you see it all though? There's no delay. No waiting until they were mature enough or old enough to make a decision for Christ. No Bible classes to make sure they were ready after some examination. No, the immediacy of baptism came when they realised their broken relationship with God through sin. They had the desire to have God heal that brokenness and unite them back into a relationship with God. Last week we heard about David and Bathsheba and also in today's Old Testament reading and how David tried to fix his broken relationship with God because of his adultery. He broke the sixth commandment and tried to fix it through the fifth commandment. He thought to himself, if I can get Uriah to believe that the child that Bathsheba is buried is his, I'm scot-free. Didn't work, so try plan B. He got Uriah drugged, thinking I'll remove his inhibitions and he'll sleep with Bathsheba and problem solved. Didn't work. He had to think to himself, how can I now fix this? Well, if Bathsheba was a widow, I could marry her and the child's mind problem solved. But he breaks the fifth commandment, thou shalt not kill. And he has Uriah placed in the front line of the war, has his fellow troops stand back, leaving him exposed, and he is killed in battle. Now the problem is solved. David can take Bathsheba, marry her, the child is his. No questions asked, except by God. As we heard in our reading, This thing that David did displeased the Lord. Fulfilling the commandments did not satisfy the guilt of his sin. But as we heard, when he confessed to Nathan, 
his sin was forgiven. Through this realisation, he wrote Psalm 51 that we heard. He realised that his brokenness with God had begun much earlier than when he committed adultery with Bathsheba. He wrote, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. He needed that relationship broke, uh, fixed even before he was born, which is why we baptise infants. Oh, but don't we hear, how can a baby have faith? Don't you have to have faith to be baptised? Doesn't Mark 16 say, whoever believes and is baptised will be saved? How can a baby believe and have faith? Well, what did David say? He says, you desire faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Faith is given to us by God, by the Holy Spirit. Paul in our second reading also talks about the healing brought about by baptism. It says there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Baptism brings to us the gift of the Holy Spirit, who unites his people in love with God and with one another. Now we know that as we look at the church, it doesn't seem to be one, does it? We have many denominations. Catholic, Anglican, Lutheran, Uniting and so forth. Well there can also be, within denominations, also division. We see our own church at the moment divided. It can be divided on many things. Ordination, creation, evolution, marriage. Paul addresses that when he writes to the Corinthian church. He says, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptised in the name of Paul? I thank God that I did not baptise any of you except for Christus and Gaius. So no one can say that you were baptised in my name. Is Christ divided? Neither are we. Now sadly, there are times when a division is necessary and can also be beneficial. Have a think about denominations. On the surface, to human eyes, it can be seen as a sad thing. But when we think about it, it can also be a healthy thing because it allows us to express our Christian faith and also focus on mission and ministry rather than the conflict and the differences that we had. Paul and Barnabas also got into a division, a conflict. They could not agree whether they should take Mark, John Mark, with them in their continued ministry tours. Barnabas wanted to take him, but Paul did not because he saw John Mark as a liability because he had previously deserted them in Pamphylia and did not continue the work of ministry. And they had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark with him. He went to Cyprus. Paul took Silas with him and left 
But they were both commended by the believers to the grace of God. The believers didn't try to say who was right, who was wrong. But they blessed both of them as they went their separate ways. Paul went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. They didn't let the disagreement become the focus and argue back and forth who was right, who was wrong. They parted company, but they also remained together in their missionary venture. And as a result, they covered more ground. Much like times of persecution, when the Christians were spread, it meant that the gospel went out even further. Likewise, despite our denominations, we remain united with those who share our understanding of baptism. That baptism is the gift of God. We may differ on other matters, but we confess the one creed. I believe in one baptism and one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Now what's interesting about Paul and Barnabas is that we read that later there was a reconciliation. In fact, Paul writes to Timothy, get Mark, the one that they disagreed about, get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. Paul, who did not want to take it, now sees the value of it. Baptism is God's gift to the church to keep us united even in division and disagreement. Now that's why we only baptise once. Because baptism is a promise of God. Even when there's been a separation from a person and church, it could be for years and decades, when they return, we don't rebaptize. Or if there's been an infant who was baptized by their parents, because as we know, I've got to get the child done, and then later in life this child comes to faith, even though there was no intention by the parents to have this baptism as a grounding of faith, it is not their work. It is the work of God that he makes in the promise that comes in baptism. So we don't baptise this person again. As Paul says in Romans 11, when he's speaking about the covenant God has with Israel, which also relates now to the new covenant that God has with us through baptism, Paul says the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. If God makes a promise, it cannot be undone, even by us. I've seen in recent times, people undergoing an unbaptism because they feel they were baptised against their will. We can't unbaptise because God's promises cannot be revoked. God does not withdraw what he has given. As Jeremiah discovered, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Before he was born. Much like what Paul says in Ephesians, we are God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do the good works that God planned for us long ago even before we were born. Friends, God is the God of unity. It is enshrined in the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. God enshrined it also in what the Jews call the Shema, 
a special prayer that Israel were taught to pray. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our, is our God. The Lord is one. Jesus too was concerned about unity when he taught, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Likewise, Paul was concerned about a lack of unity when he describes our faith like a body. He says, just as a body, though one has many parts, all its many parts, however, form one body. So it is with Christ. We were all baptised by one spirit to form one body, whether Jew or Greek, slave or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. Friends, these are very challenging times in our church. A lot of people are unsettled. But let us remember what King Solomon said in Ecclesiastes. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Divisions have been a mark of the church since its creation. But in Christ through baptism, we remain one. So friends, may you look to your baptism and keep looking to your baptism when you are struggling to make sense of the world around you, whether it's in the church or in society. Because God made a very special promise to you in, his, in your baptism. When Christ ascended on high, he says, I am with you always till the end of the age. You may ask, how can mere water do such great things? Well, Luther answered that in his small catechism. It is not water that does these great things, but God's word with the water and our trust in his word, which is a life-giving water, which by grace gives new birth by the Holy Spirit. So may that peace of God that surpasses our understanding keep our hearts and our minds forever in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us now confess that Christian faith as we confess together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing, Seek, O Seek, the Lord.
thank you, Father, for your Son, Jesus, who gives us life, and for the Holy Spirit, who joins us all together. Increase our faith in Jesus and our love for one another and all people. Lead us to use the gifts you have given us in loving service for the good of all. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the promise of God to whom we now pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to be the bread of life for the world. Forgive us for putting our earthly appetites above devotion to you. Feed us with the knowledge of Christ so that we recognise our sin and gladly repent in his name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Feed those who hunger for righteousness and holiness with the gospel of salvation in Jesus' name. Continue to gather all your people to be fed with his body and blood for eternal life. Bless Australian Lutheran College its board, lecturers, students and staff. Direct all pastors and teachers, evangelists and missionaries in the truth of Christ so that your people may be united in confession and witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose daily need for healthy food, clean water and proper shelter goes unmet. For those who misuse what they have in vain pursuit of pleasure, Feed all of us with all the good things of Christ for life now and in eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have mercy on those whose lives have been broken by violence and crime. Feed them with hope and new life in Christ. Bless our brothers and sisters in prison and those who minister to them. Feed those who are sick or sorrowing with healing and consolation through Christ. We pray for those whom we know in our name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, you heard the prayers of your people in the wilderness and fed them bread from heaven despite their sin. Graciously hear us today and feed us also with the bread of life from heaven. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Lead, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now let us go in peace and grow in faith and love. Thanks be to God. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace. Amen. Well, again, thank you for joining us. May God bless you as you claim those baptism promises every day. And now we close with our closing hymn, Thy hand, O God, has guided.